Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I think our guest just dropped something, but hope you guys are doing, <laughs> hope you guys are doing great. Welcome to the show. This is the Paranormal Portal. I'm your host, Brent Thomas. Thank you all for being here and being among us uh, as we're doing these shows. Uh, we appreciate all you guys spreading the word and keeping the message building about uh, the magic that is the Paranormal Portal. And uh, before I go any further, let me introduce my good friend and co-host, my, my, my co-pilot, my navigator, Mr. Don Longbeard. How you doing, brother? Among us. You are among us. <laughs> you are among us. How's everything going? Good? Oh, it's good. Yeah, today's been a great day. It started out, I forgot this, I forgot that. Then when I got to work, I set off the alarm. That was great. Um, so I'm batting a thousand today. <laughs> let's see if we can break something in the studio, hey, Don. Yeah, that's not a problem for me. I do it all the time. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but you've gotten better. Mm. I, I noticed that. But, but we, I got better. He got better. Um, that, that was not an Australian accent, just for the record. <laughs> no, it but, wasn't. It was my bad English again. Because I know if, if Dean's out there listening, he'll be, <laughs> He's oh, crushed. that's a terrible accent. <laughs> oh, God. How can he do this? <laughs> uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we got a special show lined up for us tonight. It's going to be absolutely uh, amazing. This is uh, uh, her first appearance on the Paranormal Portal, but she was gracious enough to have me on her show, <laughs> and she is, of course, the host of Yowie Central, and I'm speaking, of course, of our guest tonight, Miss Sarah Bignell is joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Let's bring her on. How you doing, Sarah? Hey, it's good to be here. Oh, it's good to have you here. Thank you so much for coming on and being a part of the journey. Um, I'm really excited about uh, talking about the Australian Yowie with you. This is a pretty, pretty awesome subject, and I know our listeners 
our listeners are primarily Bigfoot and uh, cryptid listeners, and they're well versed in the in the Yowie. But uh, it's just really exciting to have you here finally. Yay! I'm excited too. <laughs> <laughs> so how's things? And isn't it amazing technology that you're over on the other side of the planet, and it's like you're sitting here in my lounge room. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really am glad that, that we can do this. Um, I, I'm really excited about your show. I've listened to several episodes. You do a phenomenal job. But I got to ask you, um, how did you get into the Yowie? I mean, what was, a, was there a catalyzing event or was, there, was it just always a curiosity of yours? Or how did this all begin? Uh, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. I was always one of those kids who read books and all the books that I read were fantasy books so uh-huh. started with Enid Blyton with the magic faraway tree and you know went on to the Narnia series by C.S. Lewis and uh, The Dark is Rising Susan Cooper and then graduating on to Stephen King and Dean Koontz and 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 then all the Harry Potter books oh, and yeah. it, the whole idea for me of magic uh, yes. that the, it's kind of you don't find that out in the world quite as much as you get older and I've always really really loved the idea of that there's more out in the world than we can see that's supposed to be real um so trolls elves fairies whatever I was always into it and of course Bigfoot uh, mm-hmm. I remember seeing that the, the Patterson Gimlin footage as a kid mm-hmm. um at, just absolutely fascinated by it so I was an armchair researcher for many years, uh, a lurker on lots of different sites. Wes uh, Germa of Sasquatch Chronicles was a was a. I'm a huge fan of his. Never heard of her. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, who's that? Yeah. Uh, no, one of my one of my interviewer heroes, one of my podcast goals. Um, mm-hmm. So, with the radio show, I a, a friend of mine who do, who who does a show on the local radio show, the local radio station. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a volunteer community radio station. And she needed a co-host suddenly to uh, to help her out one afternoon and said, just come on and talk about something. And I don't care what it is, just <laughs> I need you to help fill in for, for the co-host who is sick. So I said, well, can I talk about Yowies? Because I, I don't know if I know about much else, but I've certainly been spending a lot of my free time re- armchair researching. Uh-huh. And um, after that show, she was. She said, "You should do a show on this. This is really interesting." And and I, yeah, I guess I, I thought, well, I'll give it a crack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and it's turned into this fantastic. Well, two years now I've been doing it. I think I'm up to episode seventy. One of it seventy two or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, weekly one hour show. Um, it's just. And, and starting at the beginning didn't have anybody to come on my show. I, I <laughs> no one at all. Thank God for Dean Harrison because Aww. he I must have caught him on a good day because he doesn't usually <laughs> like doing interviews yeah, and yeah. and uh, <laughs> as you know, and I got <laughs> I got him on a good day and he said yes. So oh, cool. that gave me this huge boost to mm-hmm. to, to keep going and to keep um, to keep. Uh, reaching out to different people who were researching the subject. And, yeah, it's turned into a really fun, fun show. It really is. And you do a wonderful job, first and foremost. Um, I, I, I had a blast when, when I came on and, and, of course, listening to you. You're very compassionate. You're very patient. You're very, uh, you're very comforting to these people. And it's clear that these people have experienced something that has turned their lives upside down right. when you're interviewing people. Um, and, and how, you know, you can just hear the, the struggle and how, how do I get back to normal? You know? <laughs> so you that's, do a, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And because I'm a social worker, I was a social worker for many years and I've worked with bushfire victims, uh, victims of violent crime, um, homeless people, naughty, high risk, young offenders. And so I, I've I'm trained in trauma response and in, in how to work with people who are traumatised. And that was one of the things once I started doing uh, witness interviews for Dean Harrison of Australian Yowie Research, mm-hmm. I realised that 
everyone that I was talking to was so traumatized, was really suffering P classic signs of PTSD, mm -hmm. uh, people who vividly remember things, even if it happened 30 years ago, uh, that having trouble sleeping, uh, needing to go on medication, uh, desperately needing counselling, um, getting the shakes all the time, you know, yeah. really scary stuff. So, yeah, I guess that's what I wanted to create with, with Yowie Central as well, was a, um, as well as with Australian Yowie Research, was that warm, safe space where mm -hmm. people aren't... You're not going to be ridiculed on my show. I'm not going to laugh at you. Yeah. I might laugh with you, but I'm never going to laugh at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's very powerful. Um, I, I've got to ask you, if you don't mind, um, are, do you ever get those claims and... and uh, Please understand, this is just my my own curiosity. But do you ever get those claims of of the Yowies doing mystical things like um, fading away or shimmering or you know? There's many different cloaking people have described. Have you ever uh, received that on your show? Yeah, I, I've definitely heard reports of beings that. I mean, there was there was one interview on Australian Yowie Research where. Three, diff three, three people in the one car see uh, a, a yaoi, a huge eight, nine foot tall yaoi cross the road in front of their car um, and go behind a tree. And on the other side of that tree, each, each one of those three people saw something different. So it seemed to turn into, for one, a massive goanna, which is our kind of Komodo dragon lizard, mm -hmm. uh, came out the other side of the tree. Oh. Another person, another person saw uh, a man, just some random man wearing tracksuit pants who sort of walked from behind that tree and walked off but <laughs> didn't stop. They were calling out going, hey, dude, what are you, stop, talk to us, Where, what happened there? Yeah. Ignored them. And the other person just said it disappeared into thin air. So three different people uh, saw the yaoi there and then it's gone you know, uh, and it's turned into something else. And each e each person saw something different. It's very strange. That is very strange. Wow, I've never heard yeah. a claim like that before. Yeah, and I've I've certainly more and more in the last year or so, I've heard a lot more talk of um, of interdimensional travel. Now, mm -hmm. I can't pretend to know <laughs> that much about that. I'm still learning quantum physics, wormholes, all that sort of stuff. I'm finding it fascinating, but right. there's, I, I find that coming up a lot now too. Do you, do you find that? You know, we, on the show, we don't talk to a ton of witnesses, but we have got those reports, uh, you know, callers calling in and saying, you know, I, I saw this, I know this is what I saw, but, uh, you know, uh, out by my house, there's like this field and then there's woods past that. And I saw this thing from, the waist down, he said the grass, or he saw it from the waist up. He said, right. but the grass wasn't that tall and there wasn't anything underneath it. Right. It was like it was floating. <laughs> and it's like, wow, right. I don't know. You know, and, and I, I guess me, I'm, I, have a, uh, I have an open mind, but I, I also have a logical center to my brain. It's like I need to, I need to you know, categorize them and, and make these things make sense. Did you and say quantify? Quantify, <laughs> dare I say. <laughs> uh, quantify <laughs> these things. <laughs> and I don't know how to. And, that's the, and it's not that I'm, I'm absolutely disbelieving. It's just, it's just how, what, what is going on there? You know, it, it, it's kind of the, the, big, the big question mark on top of all of this stuff yeah. is, I, I guess my, my passion for it, and this isn't about me, but I'm just <laughs> going to throw this out there, is that I, I just want to understand. And I don't know if I've gotten any closer or further away from that as these shows progress, you know? That's exactly right. I, yeah. I've, I've realized in doing this research, and particularly after now talking with so many witnesses, mm -hmm. what... I have less understanding, really, of what's going on. If you asked me what is a Yowie or what is a Bigfoot or what is a Sasquatch, my answer to you would be, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I, can, I can tell you what people describe. I can tell you what people are reporting to us. Uh, but as to having any idea of what's really going on, you know, your, your guess is as good as mine. And I'm, I'm really open to the idea of what we call paranormal traits to this whole subject but mm -hmm. uh i want to know how it works right. and I, I haven't i haven't really found 
<laughs> the answers to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're a very kindred spirit, clearly, because I, I, I think we're kind of on the same wavelength. It's, it's this, this unending mystery, and but it is the magic, as you described. It is the magic, and that's what I think is really exciting about it. But now, have you, have you personally had an experience with a yaoi? Not personally, no. And and I, for many years, I, I, I really, I really wanted to, and I, I part of me feels that as a researcher. Um, uh, I don't have as much credibility with witnesses because I haven't actually seen one myself. But I, what I what I have realised over the last couple of years, um, and and with my understanding of how trauma works, mm-hmm. so many of the people that I, I speak to are so traumatised. I'm thinking I'm actually happy to live vicariously <laughs> for now. I'm yeah. I don't want to. The people I speak to are so frightened they pee their pants. I mean, yeah. literally. Um, and terrified for that, and they think they're going to die. So, mm. as as much as I really would love to see one, um, I'm a little bit, well, I'm a lot hesitant about <laughs> actually, <laughs> especially if I'm by myself out in the bush, which I, I, I am a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. I do a lot of bushwalking, so um, yeah, yeah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, nah. <laughs> I, I, I'm with you. I think. I mean, it's it, it would be nice if I could if I could dictate the terms of it. Like, I'd like to see one, but way over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, I, and I, I spoke to this, I, sp- I interviewed a witness uh, last, a couple of weeks ago. She had quite a different, she's a very spiritual, intuitive person, and she had quite a different take on these beings. And she wasn't frightened, and she describes having this massive seven-foot creature come out of the woods, kind of going coming out of the woods going, hi, like a little kid, like moving its arms Mm -hmm. as though I was excited to see her. And she (laughs) said she's one of the few people I've spoken to who talked about her encounter, her sighting being beautiful. She said it was the most beautiful being she'd ever seen and there was no fear, there was no, it was almost like she felt that the the being knew her somehow. so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that if I get a chance to, if I do have the chance to see one of those things, it's one of those beautiful, benign, loving, warm, fuzzy yeah. ones. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I think that that would be very powerful. It's just, you know, you hear from so many witnesses that, that fear that, that seems to come even before the actual experience. It's like, I don't know, these people just have this almost sixth sense about there being something very dangerous around. And it, and it makes me wonder if these, and, and again, this is kind of far out there, but if they're able to project that somehow, maybe with pheromones, maybe with some other uh, natural uh, me- mechanism, but can they project fear or project comfort right. or, you know, yeah. can, do they have that ability? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, 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 I'd heard of the ability to emit, Infrasound, which is that sure. extremely low frequency sound that I, I've heard a lot of researchers talk about, mm-hmm. um, and that can, a bit like tigers can do, which is incapacitate their prey from a distance using infrasound mm-hmm. that paralyzes um, or makes you makes you feel so nauseous or paralyzed that you can't move. Would wouldn't it be great if they can they can emit the opposite? So yeah, some kind of or, or some kind of infrasound but it's a slightly different frequency that makes everyone relax and not be afraid um that's a pretty cool cool, wouldn't it that's a pretty cool thought you know you might be onto something with that because what if it is a matter of what low frequency like there's a low frequency sound that can make you feel afraid there's one that can make you feel comfortable you know i mean that's that's really pretty brilliant i like that yeah so that would that would be good that would be good though wouldn't it yeah (laughs) <laughs> I, I have to say, I have to say, when you were talking about that, I thought about the movie Wizard of Oz when they were tromping through the flowers and they fall asleep. Um, it was a poppy field, so yeah, I'd probably fall asleep. Yes, yeah, right. yeah, whatever. <laughs> hey, that'd be beautiful. And what a coincidence! It was a poppy field. <laughs> it's, it's it's comfort through pharmacology. That's nice. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> What's this strange? I don't know if you can get sleepy just walking through a field of flowers. <laughs> what are these strange that pills? Involves some kind of chemical process. But... Right. <laughs> these strange pills all over the ground. I don't understand. <laughs> 
It could happen. Uh-huh. I don't know. I mean, these these you know, these things are yeah. wild. Go you know, ahead. it is it is amazing though how we talk about you know all these things that <clears throat> Bigfoot, Sasquatch, he always uh, abominable snowman, you know, adorable snowman, whatever you want to call him. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's amazing how we talk about how you know how how natural and how in tune with nature they are mm-hmm. that you know yeah it'd be interesting we do talk about the infrasound i find that highly interesting myself because we have a friend who talks about she was uh, affected by infrasound mm-hmm. uh she said she was dizzy she was disoriented she didn't know what was going on and they literally threw her in the pickup and took off um so that's interesting but it would be interesting if they could hit that higher register like like you guys were were you know you know hypothesizing about being able to project this calming influence and but you know that would be in my opinion that would be even worse than being scared to death because then you're just being sucked in <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like come to me it's okay arr, arr. You know, <laughs> instead of instead of like this low oh my god i've got to run you know i'd rather do the run um but you know uh, lots of, and lots of things do that. Like a Venus flytrap, they will, they put out this sweet smell and it attracts, it attracts, uh, uh, flies and, and flying insects. And then, and then it's gotcha, you know? So I'd kind of mm. be afraid of that too. Well, that, that just, yeah. that just screwed the magic of that whole experience. It sure did. <laughs> <laughs> well, but listen to this. I, 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 and I don't know if it's, it's possibly infrasound. I, I interviewed somebody who had an encounter in Western Australia the other day. And he's, he was living out in the bush at the time, um, uh, just living in a tent pretty much. Or no, actually, he didn't even, he wasn't even in a tent. He had a, he, sort of a humpy that he'd set up. Um, and he woke up in the middle of the night and he realised he was wide awake and paralysed. I like, couldn't oh. move. Oh. He, he sort of looks down, tries to, looks down to make sure his dog's there. He can see his dog's lying by his side, also paralysed. And there was there was a, a couple of um, bush rats, little little rodents, uh, who were there but paralysed too, mid bite. Wow! Like, <laughs> oh, yes, wow. that. I mean, that. I was thinking sometimes if you there's sleep a thing called sleep paralysis, so you might be sort of in a half that half dreaming, half wake and yep. half awake state. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you, but if you wake, if you wake up and you, you're paralyzed, your dog is too, and the bush rats over there <laughs> are paralyzed as well, like frozen, like somebody had waved a magic wand and they were mid bite. Wow, crazy! That yeah. is crazy. <laughs> yeah, mean... and that and it lasted for uh, it lasted for a couple of minutes. Wow, it was yeah, very that, frightening. That's very intense, and, and you got to wonder, yeah. like, was. Was this a, a, a Yowie experience overall, or was it just a weird experience for these people? Or this well, person? he had, uh, during, in that time, he realized he could hear very heavy bipedal footsteps oh. coming closer and closer. So he didn't actually see, right. um, he didn't actually see the creature, but he heard like incredibly heavy and definitely two feet, not a, not a kangaroo. There's nothing else that makes that sort of bipedal right. walking in Australia. Right. Uh, we don't have bears. We don't have, you know, um, we don't have apes, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, that's, that, there's, a, there's a few instances of that, what, what we think maybe is infrasound, but people feeling completely paralysed and unable to move. Um, I interviewed another a woman who had an encounter at... Mount Hotham, which is in the the Victorian high country up in the mountains. Uh And uh, she had the same thing, a being, they'd seen one earlier, a couple of days earlier, and then walking back at night, they'd gone for a night hike in the snow, um, weren't using torches. And then suddenly this thing roared, bellowed at them from just off the track in the forest. And she realised that she couldn't move. Wow. Couldn't move anything. I like, couldn't move her head. Couldn't move, and it took for her husband to kind of trying to break himself out of it and shove her and go run. Um, oh, and it was only then that she was able to move. Um, so, so, and same with Dean Harrison. He had the same same situation in what with one of his many sightings up in Ormo. Um, he had that same thing where suddenly. He knows he's not alone. There's something growling and, and grunting and roaring, but he can't move. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's scary. It is that's scary shit. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. That's pretty hardcore stuff. Um, it, you know, and I, I guess it's 
it's tough to understand because I, I don't know that the infrasound from like a tiger or an elephant or the other um, animals that uh, alligators, I guess, use it to to some degree. Um, I don't know that it has that same paral paralyzing effect, you know, or at least it, it and perhaps it's due to the intelligence of these Yowies, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, that they know how to utilize it and tune have, you know, tuned it to understand or to, to have better results, perhaps. I don't know. It's it's very peculiar, but it's it's very interesting. I don't know. Yeah, it really yeah, very, it's very interesting. I but again, it's it's sort of it's it's conjecture, isn't it? Really, that we've yes. got no way of proving that until we right. until we make contact with one of these beautiful beings and they share all their secrets. So <laughs> I'm not I'm not in that camp where we're going to go out and hunt one and stick yeah. it in a cage and run tests on it. I I think that's such a horrible destructive human way of looking at things um yeah yeah, yeah. i'm in total agreement yeah. with you and um i know we're nearing the first break already and when we come back ladies and gentlemen we're going to be playing one of uh sarah's interviews um so i, I if if my tech works right <laughs> which i think it will it looks like yeah exactly that's a lot of i'm crossing everything right now um but i'm hoping it works and if not uh you know you'll have to forgive me because you guys are getting the beta test <laughs> it's, uh, i haven't gotten it to work for tfr and youtube so i think tonight's the night I think I've got this all ironed out, but it'll be a, a chance for you guys to to listen to one of the uh, encounters and, and uh, the stuff, the magic that Sarah does on her show. So that'll be fantastic. But you know what I was thinking of, Sarah, as you were talking about uh, the infrasound and, and uh, you know, the, the impact of being frozen and not moving and such was also, uh, curiously, as a side note, the husband wasn't affected the same way as the wife huh? or the significant other. Not as much like he, okay. he he was, but he didn't seem to be as as affected as she as wow. she was. Okay. Um, and I did speak to him. I interviewed him separately. I spoke to him um, later, and he didn't report feeling. He was frightened, but he didn't report feeling that same paralysis. Yeah, and and many people talk about the the power of their screams and how loud they are. Mm. And I remember on uh, and uh, you know on Wes's show Sasquatch Chronicles, he interviewed the lady from England, mm. who uh, that was you know, crazy. Yeah, but it, she oh, had, Claire. She, yeah, yeah, she had the male and female come yes. up, and they were doing the samurai chatter back yes. and forth, and then suddenly the the big one just got angry and screamed because, and then the next thing she knows, she's woke up by her car all scratched up and stuff, and it, it, it's it it was enough to make her go unconscious. So that's a, that's a hell yes. of a of a of an impact for sound waves to have. So oh, absolutely. That that that's one of the scariest encounters i've ever heard i know that one really well i've listened to it a few times yeah just when she she's about to take a photo of these this family group oh, of sasquatches yeah. that are on the beach and then didn't she drop her camera yes. lens cap yeah and it clicked and the, and, the, and and it clicked and made it landed on the rock and made a noise and all of a sudden they all turn around to her oh. at the same time what a, what <laughs> one, a, one thing like ah yeah <laughs> I would. I no wonder she passed out. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, uh, the gravity of the whole situation must have been terrifying. But, ladies and gentlemen, we're yeah. going to be going to the first break now. So when we come back, right from break, we're going to go right into the sound file because it's it's about twenty six minutes long. So, uh, just get ready for that. Um, hopefully, it all works. And uh, don't go away because we have a lot more to cover. Don, oh, yes. how much of the how much behind are the is the clock versus the? It was almost a minute. Almost a minute. Right. Okay, so it's any second now. The, the, the music's going to come in, and, and then we'll know that we have to go to break. But, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot more tonight coming up. Um, as you can tell, it's going to be an epic, epic evening here on the show. There it is. There's the bell. So we'll be right back, everybody. Don't go away for more of the Paranormal Portal in just a couple minutes.
right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and we're going to go right to this clip. So I uh, hope you guys are ready for this. This should be pretty darn epic. All right. So here we go. Basically, it was uh, 2008, uh, January at about 2 a.m. in the morning. I was situated at the Nambaka Caravan Park. I'd had a rough night that night and decided that the people that I was with at the time, I would leave. It was probably a bad decision. It was really early twilight, you know, one-ish in the morning that I decided, 1.30-ish, that I decided to leave out of Nambaka. And when I left, I looked at my um, fuel gauge and realised that I was on quite low. I had about a quarter of a tank to get me from Nambucca over to Coffs Harbour. And knowing that they'd have an all-night stop out there, because obviously everything was closed in Nambucca for fuel at that hour. So I headed out, still, with uh, intention that I'd be able to make it. Started out and got out onto the highway and headed towards the Blongle Blongle Forest, which is outside of... Uh, Nambucca there. As I was driving, I had my dog with me, which was a like a 10-year-old Maltese who was partially blind and extremely sensitive to anything because of her, she, everything was heightened with her sensitivities because she was partially blind. And uh, she started squirming and carrying on in the passenger seat because she's sitting on the opposite side of me there and making quite a noise. I had the window partially down for her as well so she could breathe in the oxygen along the way. And she went from that seat down to the bottom of the floor of the vehicle and started cowling and carrying on quite a bit under the um, dashboard of the vehicle. And I was like, what's going on with the dog? You know, I was just so out of text with the dog and stuff. And suddenly I smelt this pungent smell. So it was so pneumonic and so pungent that it was burning my nose and I was like what is this roadkill of course the first thing that comes to mind but heck of a roadkill it was like something like a cow or a horse that could even stink like this you know so not even thinking anything of it continued driving and at this time I looked at my speedo I was traveling about 95k on that highway and it was the new part of the highway that I was entering into so they just made a four-lane connection there and it was kind of breaking out the road. So it was on its own for a little while in the two-lane road. You see the opposite side um, of the northbound side, but there was an island through the middle of grass and sort of like a ditch that went down through it. But it was quite an open space. And off to the left, there'd been quite a clearing of all the pine trees since they'd put the highway through. So you could see through the pine trees as you were travelling along. You know how you can see that cartoon effect where you can see whatever's running, whatever's in that, you would see it, right? It would be quite clear. You know, there was a shadow at the very back of the forest line as I was travelling along, and I kept catching it in my peripheral vision. And it was concerned about the dog and stuff and looking around me, so I was a bit heightened my senses and realised that there was definitely something in the distance. So I uh, kept sort of putting that off, ah, it's nothing, you know, da 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 it's probably just animals, whatever, but what's that big? Started to notice it more and more, it seemed to be coming closer. And what I had noticed was that the highway was then cutting in from the forest and the forestry line was finishing, right? So that forestry line that I was looking at to my left was no longer as thick and it was thinning out and there was something like 10 trees then instead of maybe 40 trees back. So whatever it was that was behind that tree line was as coming in closer and I was getting more of a view of whatever this thing was and it was something that was on small legs that was running. I thought, a horse, a cow, but what, could be, what on earth could it be, you know? It could be keeping up with my vehicle. Anyway, uh, the roads closed in. We got down to about two tree lines on the left-hand side, and I was thinking, oh, whatever this is, it's going to be coming in and it's going to cross across because it's following the end of the tree line with my vehicle. And that tree line would finish, and then the highway would begin and there's no more tree line. So wherever it was coming, if it was coming towards me, it was going to have to cross the highway. So I was like, oh, no, whatever that is, that's coming right towards me now. We're going to intersect for sure. So uh, before I knew it, it was on the left-hand side of my vehicle, whatever this thing was. 
I managed to cop a bit of a view of it through my, uh, you know, rear vision mirror on the left side, you know, the, the side mirror. I was driving a four-wheel drive RAV at the time. Um, so she was a pretty sturdy vehicle. It had crept up the side of the vehicle and was on the dirt side of the road with my vehicle, whatever this thing was. So it looked like a giant red setter would be the best way of me. I didn't see any face or anything at the time because it, it had its head down and it was running on four legs. So the closest description at that point would have been an ape, you know, like a silverback gorilla size. It was just huge, but very slender and skinny and long, flowing red hair. And I was like, oh, my God, it's, um, you know, some sort of creature. I don't know. I don't want to walk. I'm getting pretty scared at this point. Um, it follows me along the road for quite a period of time. I start speeding up. I've looked at my speedo. I'm nearly 100 clicks by this stage. It's still beside me. My dog's absolutely going burp under the seat. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to veer over to the right lane to get away from this thing, right? There's no one around me. There's not one car on the road. There's nothing. It's a complete dead highway. This thing is on the left of me. It then picks its speed up and comes across the front of my vehicle while it's still travelling at this speed, but it's going actually faster than my vehicle and runs directly in front of my moving vehicle, right? And at the stage of it running on the four legs, it transitions from four legs to two legs. And so then it's bipedal, right? And it comes up and the size of this thing absolutely threw me. And I nearly rolled my vehicle when I saw this thing stand up. And it was like easy eight foot, easy eight foot. Wasn't looking like it wanted to attack me wasn't looking like it wanted to hurt me, but it was like it was having a game with my vehicle, which was the strangest part about it. And it stood up and turned its head and looked directly at me and then basically just jumped across the highway, ran onto the opposite northbound side of the two-lane highway and just disappeared into the forest. <laughs> it was <pretty laughs> terrifying. That would have been absolutely looking- terrifying. You know how you lean over your steering wheel and look up? Well, yeah. that's what I did. I leaned over the steering wheel and looked up and could not believe what I was seeing. It was like, this thing is a giant. It looked like it was a male. It was very um, neanderthal So it had all the traits of being Neanderthal-like, um, ape-like, had hair all over its cheeks, basically growing on its face. Full length. It wasn't short hair. We're talking full length hair, like something out of Chewy out of Star Wars. The hair on the top of his head flowed to the bottom of the ground. It was that long. And the hair on his arms was that long. It was just magnificent being, really was. And it was so clean and so brightly red and brown. If I was to classify its age, I would say maybe an adolescent or maybe a young male, but very, very athletic-like, very thin, quite clean, stinky as all hell, didn't make a noise, didn't make a growl. My dog was the only thing that was carrying on to the end degree in the vehicle. Um, It took a long time for that stink to come out of the car as well because as it crossed across me, it was just like I'd been intoxicated with the thing. And I could smell that smell in my vehicle. And we only had the windows down a tiny bit. Um, I remember locking my vehicle too while we were driving because I was terrified. I thought at this point all I needed to do was run out of fuel right at this point because I had been really sticking it to the car to try and get away from it. I thought, well, if I run out of fuel or if I roll the car, because when I changed lanes, I nearly rolled my vehicle in panic because I was looking at the creature, not looking at the side that I was changing lanes to. So I remember the vehicle sort of like, you know, sort of gisting to the side a little bit because of how powerfully I turned to the right and the dog falling and all the stuff in the seats falling as we sort of like quickly screeched over to the right side at that speed. But it kept up with me the whole way and it went faster than my vehicle. So I would have hit 105 at the end and it was going faster than 105. It was just incredible speed. Incredible. And it seemed to gain more speed on two legs than four. 
when it turns to look at you, you're driving and it turns to look at you, did it have an expression on its face? No, it was a blank face. Just looked directly at me and I looked directly at it and it had very red eyes. So it had red eyes. Were they beaming out or glowing? Well, they weren't like laser beams, but uh-huh. they were like as if you shone a torch in a, in a cat's eye, you know, that kind of effect, or yeah. someone's eyes and they would go take a photograph of someone's eyes and they go red. That kind of redness that I was seeing, it wasn't like a glowing alien or anything like that, yeah, okay. but it was, the eyes were definitely, the pupil was red when I looked at it. Were there any whites of the eyes or was it just the whole thing you could see was all red? Just very red. Very red and very sort of like a pale, sort of jaundice yellow white in the eyes. I didn't see its chest moving for breathing like it was panting. It didn't even look like it was just cracking a sweat. This thing (laughs) just ran and I was just like, oh my God, what is it? It was so athletic. The leap that it made across the centre highway would have been two car lengths. It was like it just took it like it was nothing. Just boing, straight across it. And I was just like, oh my God. When you first spotted it, it's running on all fours. How tall do you reckon it was? So you thought it was maybe a cow? Well, I could or... see it. I could see the top of it, its back and its head from the side of the car. Just from about halfway from his back up to his head crotch down, I could see him beside the vehicle. And I knew he was on four legs at that point. But I obviously couldn't get over to that side to look directly at him. But I could see in my rear vision mirror what I was looking at. Describe the running motion on on all fours. He was on four when he first greeted me in the vehicle. Running on four, like, you know, like like an ape would run on on four legs. And was the back slightly on an incline or was it completely flat? Yes. No, slightly on an incline meaning the arms are probably longer than the legs. His arms were most definitely longer than our arms would be. His lower forearms were nearly double the length of my arms. He was so long. When we stand up, our arms might be like they go to nearly the top of the bottom of our uh, kneecap, but his arms looked like they went down past the kneecaps. They were just giant. And he wasn't like stocky, but he was just massively tall and slender and he was you could tell he had buff about him just gave me the feeling that it was a male didn't have female genitalia didn't have a breast and Mm -hmm. didn't didn't have that look to it that it was a female you couldn't see whether it was what sex particularly it was but i would have guessed it to be a male because just didn't look female at all you would have seen the mammary glands on its chest and stuff and i saw its chest and it was flat chested the bottom of his hands didn't have hair on it So the hair went almost down to the tops of his um, digits, grew on his fingers, everything. And how long do you reckon the hair was? I know you said it was really long and flowing, but... It was ridiculous. It was flowing like a a prancing horse tail. It was just so long. It was just flowing. And I just remember being in awe of his hair. It was just flowing. Because of the speed he was doing, it was just all flowing behind him. So there was a moon that night? That you could see? Yeah, it was quite light. Definitely quite light. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have seen those shadows through the forest if it wasn't quite a, a light night. I, I should look the um, the moon up for the night of the 1st of 2008, January, and it'll give me a bit of an idea where the moon was sitting. But I definitely had a good vision of him even at one in the morning. And my lights were all on him. You know, my, I had my beamers on, everything. What was the mouth doing when you looked at it? Was it open or closed? No. You could see that he had teeth. Just really saw like the first four teeth, the top upper part of his teeth, very big lips, really big lips, and just really dark, dark skinned, dark skinned, dirty, dark skinned sort of look. Did you catch the shape of the teeth or the colour? Not really. I just knew that he had teeth. Yeah. And I didn't see any fangs or anything like that. He didn't growl. He didn't look like he wanted to attack. He, I mean, if he wanted to, he could have jumped my car. He was right next to me while he was travelling. He could have held on to that vehicle, could have jumped on top of me, could have pushed my vehicle. He could have done anything he wanted to. And all he wanted to do was just show off, really. That's, it really that's was. possibly it was why like it reminded game. you of a teenage you yeah, know, young man. Yeah, that's why it reminded me that it wasn't a, um, you know, something like a hunting male. I was that damn terrified. And I pulled into the Coffs Harbour um, P1 
petrol station straight afterwards. And I remember sitting at the petrol station for over three quarters of an hour trying to um, console myself over what I'd seen. And I told the guy at the service station what I'd witnessed. And he said, oh, he gets at least one of those witnesses once a week at least come through and say something about that forest. He said he gets it all the time wow. through Kofsava down through Nambaka. He reckons it's a hot spot big time for these creatures that are in there. They come down from maybe the ridge and they feed down in the lower parts at night and then they must go back up to the ridge lines again early morning. It would be interesting to talk to someone who regularly gets people coming in like you who, who've had a frightening experience. He'd probably have mm. quite a few good stories to tell. Oh, uh, and the speed was the thing that just absolutely uh, knocked me over because I've read so many stories and stuff about them and never have I heard of one that, that was as fast as this. Never. In the distance, when it was coming through the forest, it was snapping trees like they were toothpicks. And the trees that they were snapping were as big as an advanced bangalow palm. You could see them and hear them. Oh, I could see the trees coming down. It was cracking trees over left, right and centre to get out to the roadside. And there's power, like it was just mowing trees over. I was like, oh my God. So how long did it run alongside your car for? Yeah, well, this is another question I put to myself. Um, possibly about three minutes I was with it. That would have seemed like three centuries, I, I guess. Yep, because I just remember trying to pick speed up and get away from it and drive in front of it and I couldn't get my vehicle past it. And I was like, if I keep pushing this, I'm going to blow the motor. Oh, and running out of petrol too was the, was the worst part. Like, I don't want to be stuck here with it. Yeah, it was just bizarre. The acceleration and the power made me think that possibly it came from two worlds, meaning possibly, you know, something that just wasn't known to us, something of a higher strangeness. Because I can only maybe... Imagine a cheetah running at about at its fastest speed and it's going to take it a couple of seconds to reach that speed of about 80 kilometres. But never would I have heard an ape or, you know, a monkey or anything like that being able to run at speeds like that. And in bare feet too. You see, you could see the feet? It had no shoes, had no clothing whatsoever. Just massive, massive all round. Big, big arms, big hands, everything. Big head. He was a really big, tall creature, a stately creature, really, you know. What shape was the head? I would say it was very long, the head, very high sort of cheekbones and had like a very flat nose. So the nose would have had very broad um, nostrils and very dark skin around those sections and then hair that sort of grew around the face and you didn't see ears, nothing. Everything was under hairline. Was it a round head? It was long and round with a very long front face to him. Thick neck, the neck didn't seem to be defined like us as humans. His neck sort of seemed to sit within his shoulders. How wide were those shoulders, do you think? He was more athletically built. Um, he wasn't like some of the ones that people have drawn, but still very big, you know. I didn't see, like, great big biceps and things like that. No, I would have seen more of an athletic structure to him. And that's what made me think that he was young. And you didn't hear any noise at all? No noise, gave no noise out, no growl, no rumble, no, you know, how they do all these terrible groans, you hear them and... I mean, I was really just staring at its face and just the massity of the, you know, and the smell, you know. It was just like I, was, I had my hand over my face. It was that intense. I think you said you noticed the smell before you saw the creature. Yep. How far away from you, from your car, was it? Six or seven tree lines back by that stage that I started to smell it. That's a fair distance. Oh, yeah, and worse and worse as it came closer like it had almost been peeing on itself you know that sort of smell of a bat kind of thing acidic pneumonic rotten flesh smell approximately how many meters away do you reckon it was 15 20 tree lines that deep when i saw its shadow and then it just kept encroaching because the tree lines were finishing 
So it went from about, you know, 50 tree lines deep, then it started then closing into about 30 tree lines, and then it had come into about 20, and then it had came into about 10, and then it came down to five, and then mm-hmm. it just finished. And the creature just appeared out of there, and it was just like, I knew it was in there. And then when it just showed itself, I was like, this is ridiculous. And mm-hmm. then I tried to actually pull back, and it pulled back with me. Like it was waiting with me. I was like, no, because I thought, well, I can't stop the car. So I pull the car back, don't keep travelling along and encouraging it, pull back a bit. No, nah, then it pulls back with me. So it was like the more I sped up, the more it sped up, and I was like, oh, God. And then it stood up on two thought, legs. Yeah, then went up on two. I thought it was going to get on the vehicle. That's what I thought. I thought it was going to get on that vehicle and it was going to shake my car and peel it open like it was a can opener. But he didn't, you know, he just didn't. He just came in front, showed himself, stood up and, and, and did this giant leap in a running form off the side of the road to the other side, over the island, and just disappeared into the forest. And you didn't see it after that? No, that was it. It was gone. I was, I was hooking it out of there. Mm-hmm. And then I pulled up out of the forestry line up a little bit further to sort of, uh, to, uh, you know, say my prayers and thank the Lord I was still alive. But I remember getting home and just absolutely collapsing and waking up the next day and going, well, that wasn't a dream because I still remember it as clear as day. To me, this changes how science predicts how we were created. These creatures are still walking our planet and obviously they have been here since Gondwana. They have just been pushed further and further into the bushland and into the forest because obviously they don't mix with us. Another friend of mine had an encounter. Um, he lived in Coffs Harbour. His dog chased the Yowie and the Yowie picked the dog up and swung it round and tore its tail off. Was the dog yep. still alive? And, no, the dog died. Oh. He found the dog in the tree. Oh. It had thrown the dog up into the tree and it was hanging over the tree and its tail was on the ground. It really affected him no end, you know, and he had a couple of different encounters. He lived on, you know, the Coffs Harbour banana fields behind the banana plantation there, the big banana. Well, apparently there's said to be a really big creature that lives up there and the people that live on the property on the banana field there, the banana field plantation, have encountered this yaoi many times over because he comes down and he takes the fruit and they find the bags all broken open in the morning and he's just taken a big hand of bananas off the plantation and carried them home. So, And he had many stories, many, a story about an Aboriginal woman who had been taken, but um, that woman escaped and apparently that creature came back several times looking for her. Was it a historical encounter? So it was some time ago? Um, he told me it was like 15 years ago mm-hmm. and there were stories of, you know, children being taken, yeah. all sorts of things. I just cringe. Cringe at the thought. There's some very vicious, vicious stories out there. You've heard them. you have seen, it, seen his, his fair share of um, creatures. Yeah. The <laughs> he certainly has. He certainly has. He's got to be the creature man of all time, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. He, and he had a terrifying, well, he's had a, a few, but... You know, to be actually hit and sh- and pushed by one running at you in the dark <laughs> through the forest like a freight train totally. coming at you, he would have been terrified. It's That's- just amazing, amazing. Mm. I mean, I bet you him of all people is the big believer. Yes, he is totally. Yeah, he's yep. seen them. So. Great story, that terrific story. Yeah. It, it gave me courage after I'd heard his story to come forward with mine. The more people we can give courage to to come forward, the better. And, yeah. I don't, and I don't believe you're crazy either. Pretty much everyone I've spoken to, and there's lots of people, have been genuinely traumatised and terrified. And I'm quite happy to live vicariously at the moment. And when they do find you, it's when you least expect it. That's the thing. And that's where you question yourself. And that's why you're so gobsmacked and you don't know what to do because you're just so caught by it. You're just so frozen in fear. Have you? There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is uh, an amazing interview, uh, an amazing experience. Um, <laughs> I, I, huh? 
<laughs> no, no, I gotta, I gotta get the, I gotta get everything reassembled here. There you go. Sorry, there you go. <laughs> that's incredible, Sarah. That's a, that's an amazing encounter. Wow. Absolutely mind blowing. Can you imagine how frightened you'd be driving at, in the middle of the night by yourself, no yeah. one else on the road, oh my God. you and your little dog, and then there's this massive thing that's barreling towards you first on all fours and then and is keeping up with your car and then stands up onto two legs and keeps running at the same pace and jumps like in front of your car Um, the that's paradigm changing that's mind-blowing all right stuff all right so we're going to go to the hour break ladies and gentlemen we'll come back and discuss this story in length when we return don't go away
Caroline is not like those she's with. They're attracted to the one thing about her that is different from themselves. Her life force is very strong. It gives off its own illumination. It is a light that implies life and memory of love and home and earthly pleasures. Something they desperately desire but can't have anymore. Right now, she's the closest thing to that. Poltergeist are usually associated with an individual. Hauntings seem to be connected with an area. A house, usually. The guy's disturbances are fairly short duration, perhaps a couple of months. Hauntings can go on for years. Why, yes, they can, ladies and gentlemen, and so can the paranormal portal, hopefully. Hopefully it can go on for years and years and years, and uh, hopefully you guys will still be here watching it. <laughs> but welcome back, everybody. Uh, thanks for sticking it out over the break. I know the breaks can be uh, kind of tedious, but we're also broadcasting on TFR Live and the network over there, and so we got to time our, our YouTube with the network breaks. So that's why you guys get videos here uh, to keep you company and to entertain you. And uh, hopefully you feel wildly entertained because our guest tonight has been absolutely phenomenal. And, of course, I'm talking about Sarah Bignell of Yowie Central and Australian Yowie <laughs> Research is joining us today. And, and we just listened. If you're just joining us, you missed out on an incredible uh, recorded interview that uh, Sarah shared with us. Definitely incredible. Wow. That blew me, blew me away. Uh, first of all, I've never heard a report of them moving like that. That is really incredible. I've I've actually heard a few. Um, there's uh, and and a couple of when women are driving alone in their cars at night, um, which it, which is slightly slightly well not more more than slightly. It's a lot scary. Yeah. Um, but the the whole idea of I, I find it I found it really interesting. The whole idea of it. Sh her impression was not that it was trying to harm her, mm -hmm. that it was more a, a like a teenager toying with her and playing with her. Yeah. Um, scary still, but um, <laughs> I, I whole I, the whole idea of roadside sightings perplexes me because they must see they, a creature with 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 strength like that, with abilities like that, with a sense of smell, with a sight. Uh, how they could not not see the car coming <laughs> and get out of the way, yeah. um, you know. So I, I I I I tend to think there's a lot more deliberate about right. a lot of the roadside sightings that we hear, and there are truckloads of them. Right. Like the, yeah. the vast majority are uh, roadside sightings. Right. Um, hmm. Yeah, but but <laughs> but definitely frightening seeing something running on four legs and then rearing up onto two and then looking at you with n no expression. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> I don't know what would be worse, actually, because I, I, I interviewed someone who recently who talked about seeing rage and fear and mm -hmm. and shock cross, go across the, the, the being's face. Right. So I don't, but I don't know what would be worse, like <laughs> complete expressionless or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or some, or, all are seeing the rage. I, I don't know. Both pretty bad, pretty scary. Right. What were you, were you going to well, ask? Them, well, no, I was going to say, you know, there's we've we've heard several, you know, people talk about like juvenile Bigfoots counting coup, you know, trying to get the street cred with their friends, you know. So that's what I was thinking after she was talking about how it jumped in front of her and like jumped out of the way and and uh, how she, he made. This 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 creature made such a, a an entrance, knocking over trees and blah 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 blah. Um, I, th I thought it was interesting, and then how it just kind of gave her a look like, you know, whatever, and like zipped off again. So yeah. it sounds to me like a juvenile counting coup. Yeah, that that's a great possibility. I you know, and, and I agree. You're right. I, it's. I assume that their hearing is also impeccable, <laughs> you know, and it's like, I know when I've been up in the, in the woods in a real desolate place, 
you can hear a car coming like a mile and a half yep. or more yep. long before it ever shows up. And it's like, you know, they, they're, they're, they're gotta be doing it on purpose. I've thought the same thing. It's like, you know, if they have, and obviously they work really hard to stay away from us normally, but then you get to something like this. It's like, you know, it's looking at her with the deadpan face. Like is that all you got, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. It's just crazy. Now I got to ask you, um, how often do you hear reports about the glowing eyes like that? Oh, quite regularly. Uh, okay. If they're, if they're nighttime sightings, then the glowing red eyes uh, appear quite regularly. Uh, and not always red, sometimes orange, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes green, sometimes a, 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 an iridescent blue-white. Um, the vast majority, though, are, are red, red-orange. Okay. Uh, some people even talk about them potentially being self-illuminating, like being able to see, like it's not traditional eye shine that's reflecting another source of light that... Uh, that there's somehow there's something that's self illuminating about the eyes. I don't. Again, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know. I don't know right. how that works. Sure. Um, that's pretty common. What about in the states? Do you guys get? It comes up. More reports. It comes up with the glowing eyes. Uh, I know of uh, one gentleman. Uh, I think his name is Kevin Keeney. He's a researcher uh, out of Arizona on the Mogollon Ridge, and and he he talks about how he sits there in, in absolute blackness, no lights, not even a campfire, and suddenly he'll see the red eyes appear. So it's not like he has a light source that should be reflecting back. And he talks about how they glow, and it's, and it's really incredible. I, you know, I, I, it, it doesn't come up a ton, but it does come up, and that's why I'm curious over there because you know I don't know that there's many differences at all between the Yowie and the Bigfoot or Sasquatch of the, of the Americas. I don't... I don't know. It seems like they're, by and large, the same being. Um, are you aware of any differences between the two? Well, we generally, the reports here, no, a short answer is they seem to be really similar. There's similar reports from from the U.S. and, and from Australia. We have uh, perhaps, from what I understand, what I've identified in the U.S. is that there are, you know, four different main types minimum there might be a few more mm -hmm. um whereas you know a type a b c and d whereas in australia we've more we seem to have um at this stage like research is still in its infancy but um at this stage we have a a, a taller species the big fellas as the, the aboriginal people call them is the big fellas and the little fellas oh. uh so two different species mm -hmm. um according to some of the aboriginal of people i've spoken to i've spoken to they, um, they're, they're different entities. They're, they're both ancient entities, okay. uh, but they're different. They're completely different species. Um, one of them is more mischievous than the other. One of them is more dangerous than the other. Apparently, I've heard that the little ones are, are more dangerous than the bigger ones. The big <laughs> ones don't really want to hurt you. But um, again, I, I, I don't know. So I guess in Australia the, the the main difference would be that we've got the two species. Mm -hmm. We we have we do get Australian Yowie research are getting more and more reports in now of a dogman like creature, oh. something with a with a with a muzzle. Uh -huh. um, a lot of the older there's a lot of newspaper reports from um, early European settlement in Australia. Um, the newspapers that existed at the time, but there are reports back in the, the 1800s of these beings. Um, and so they're generally following the same, the, the big, hairy, uh, mm -hmm. same description as Bigfoot or, or the smaller beings. Mm -hmm. But they did describe some of these beings back in those days as having a bit of a muzzle. Now, I don't know whether that's like a baboon type muzzle and whether they were just trying to interpret what they were seeing. Most of these people would never have seen a gorilla in real life at that stage. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure whether the dog man exists here. We, we have had reports of something uh, with ears, like Dober, like a Doberman dog um, with muzzle. Wow. Uh, yeah, but not it's, it's not as common, but we've certainly had a few reports of that. Is uh, so... 
Sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, is there an Aboriginal precedent for that? Is there any legend uh, coming down through the Aboriginal lines that might describe that kind of a creature? As far as I'm aware, not the okay. dog man as such. There's okay. Aboriginal legends relating to the, the, the big fellas and the little fellas. Sure. Uh, the Doolagal is one of the Aboriginal words for the big fella is the Doolagal and the Junja, the Junjadi, which is the, the little fellas. I'm just one of the many sure. Aboriginal names for them. There are different names all over the country. Um, but I haven't heard, and I, I could be corrected, but I haven't heard Aboriginal legends of that sort of a creature. But I have heard Aboriginal stories. I had heard one just the other day of devil dogs, devil dogs. up in the northern up in the up in the northern territory. And and I said, well, are you talking more about a, a bipedal? dog man kind of thing and he was like no no it's it's a full four-legged uh quadrupedal but they call them the the devil devil dogs oh. um glowing red eyes okay you know yeah so <laughs> it, it doesn't seem and like this phenomena occurs all over the world mm. uh on, on on every continent except antarctica you know so yeah. um they and there's so many similarities. Are we talking about just one species? Are we right. talking about interdimensional beings that could pop up anywhere, really, all over the world, in which case it doesn't really matter? Right. Yeah. You know, um, do you know what I mean? Like they, I do. Yeah. They could have evolved separately on, on different continents or they could have um, – or, the, or they don't belong here and just pop up here every now and then. Right. Yeah, uh, that's a- I don't know. <laughs> Those are the great mysteries, and, and it's what I'm curious about, too. Yeah. Well, I, you know, and I have questions because I always have questions, but <laughs> I like how you said, you know, they just pop up here. Um, how exactly do they pop up? You know, uh, we've talked to people about, you know, the idea of the quantum Bigfoot, you know, being able to pass. And I see the book behind you, by the way. Um, yes. How they, how they pass, you know, how they can pass through portals or folds or whatever you want to call that and pop up. We've all, we've asked that question several times about like the different uh, sea creatures, uh, sea monsters, if you will, the Nessies, the, the Pepe's, the, the champs, you know, it, are they all the same one that pass through a portal uh, and then pop up in these different areas? Are they different like mating, you know, uh, areas or, you know, do they go here to hunt or whatever? So, um, and, and so with that thought, you know, how, how would, you know, if you've got no precedence before of seeing these creatures, what do you mean they just pop up? That's scary enough. And just say no to dogmen anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah, look, I, yeah, I don't have any answers. I, I'm, I'm, I've just started learning about the whole concept of what, yeah. other, what other dimensions mean, what right. interdimensional travel might mean how that's actually physically possible. Um, it's, a, it's a new area of, of study for me, and I'm, I'm really open to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, yeah, don't ask me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I've, no idea. I've, I've got no idea how that stuff works. <laughs> Come on, uh, if someone can explain it to me, please, please write him to me yeah. and, uh, and, and tell me how the hell that works. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you can't explain it? Wait a minute. What was the presence here? <laughs> Hang on, I'll just have to look up my book. Just a <laughs> I hear you. No, I, I, I think that those are those are all the questions we have all around now. Um, I have to ask you regarding that that interview, as she described the Yowie, it's the long hair. Is is that description pretty typical for how people are describing? the yaois or is that an atypical because generally over here we hear about you know the face seems to have a really fine hair Mm -hmm. it's not really uh it's not really bald it just looks like it has this real fine uh hair on it and then it gets longer on the chin line like a beard you know and all that um but she had described that it looked more like a chewbacca thing with the long hair all over the place is that pretty typical for yaoi sightings yeah uh there's there's a variety of that so some people some people uh, report the full Chewbacca face covered in hair. Uh, other people describe what you just described, and maybe there's a there's a clear section around the the eyes, yeah. um, or even around the the the, the face. Mm-hmm. Um, 
what what was really atypical in her story was that she describes this long flowing red hair like a red setter dog mm -hmm. um if you, and if you can picture one of those, they've got this beautiful, long, red, silky hair that sort of <laughs> flaps around in, in the wind. Mm -hmm. uh, and when they run, um, that was that was unusual. The length of the hair was unusual. But a few months ago, the the, I, the woman I spoke to who who was who felt paralysed up in the mountains a few months ago, the creature that she saw a couple of days before that experience that both her and her husband saw was blonde. Oh. Had long, flowing blonde hair. We, we, we've sort of nicknamed, nicknamed him the Fabio Yowie. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know if you know, if you, yeah, do you know yeah. that guy, sure. the sure. Fabio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, the, the, the guy who was used as cover for romance novels uh, <laughs> all over the world because he's got this, you know, he's big and muscular and big square jaw and he's got this beautiful, long, flowing blonde hair. Yeah. Um, and so that was, yeah, what's, what's unusual is the length of the hair. Okay. Uh, not so much the face covering that we get the the full spectrum of that. That's really cool. I yeah. I mean, I, I guess it probably stands to reason because I think that they probably have some biodiversity among them. So it's like they're all not going to look the same, much like people. They're you know we come in all shapes and sizes and and you know different variations in hair colors. So right. that's not unusual. But of course the red the red hair coloring is not unusual over here either. Um, as far as generally people seem to s uh, see most often either a reddish orange color like an orangutan or black. Uh, that seems to be the most common colors that I, that I have bumped into when I read about reports and stuff. But uh, the red certainly isn't unusual at all. Um, I, I don't, you know, again, the, the length of the hair, we, we generally hear about hair lengths um, being long on the head and, and like on the top of the head and draping down like, you know, almost like a rock star haircut. And then uh, six, six inch, eight inch long hair on the arms. Mm -hmm. So that's not uh, too unusual over here. So just as a comparison. Yeah, and I think um, people generally report that the hair on the arms to be a little bit longer than, say, on the chest yes. or on the back. Um, but, yeah, I, most of the time it's somewhere between two inches and four or five, six inches long maximum. But wow. to have it really long and flowy... Um, yeah, <laughs> there's got to be a Fabio in every community, doesn't there? <laughs> there's one one egotist out there for sure. Um, did the did the AYR check out that that location then? Following that report, did you guys check it out? Uh, so not that particular location because it's um, it's in New South Wales. It's in northern New South Wales, but okay. it's a little bit f further away. For oh. so I'm down. If you look at Australia, I'm down in the southeast in Victoria. Uh -huh. uh, the rest of the team, Dean and Gary and Buck and um, the, the team up in Queensland are on the Gold Coast. So, oh. um, Dean, they, they research things that are, you know, around the Gold Coast area, closer to home, um, and it was a little bit little bit more of a drive for us to get there. So uh, we didn't go and check out the, the actual location. Because it's often, often th There's often not much point, you know. Sure, um, but it, you know, just when the, because she went to the the gas station and, and talked to the attendant, the attendant's like, "Oh yeah, we get one of those a week." It's like really, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. My God. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, we get there are hotspots like that sure. all over the country. There's there's another one called the Pilliga, which is in New South Wales, and it's um, three thousand square kilometers of scrub. Oh. Um, that's really. There's so many people report scary things happening. There's lots of Yowie sightings. There's UFOs. There's ghosts. There's all sorts of stuff going on in in that particular area as well. So we can't get to we can't get to every location. Sure. sure. You know, I get I've I've gotten I've gotten twelve new reports in the last week. Oh my um, god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some of them are historical. That like people. Because of the because of the, the the incredible thermal camera footage that the AYR team up in Queensland captured, that was and you're going to talk about that, I know, with with Gary yep. next week. Next but, week. So I won't steal his thunder and talk about it too much. <laughs> but um, that every time we put out a, a video, and particularly that one, but, um, there's a new spurt of people finding the courage to write in. Um, 
finding the courage to tell their story and to share it. A lot of people keep that stuff to themselves for years. Uh, don't even tell their their, their partners, uh, their wives, or their or their children even. Um, so it's it's impossible to get to every location. Yeah. Uh, considering the considering the volume of reports we get in, um, it's just it's never ending. Uh, sure. Which which is great because it it actually does mean that so lots of people have said to me, "Thank you so much for your work and for your interviews and uh, and for Dean himself for starting this whole organisation and for sharing his yeah. experiences because other people have now got someone to to talk to about it um, yeah. and they often don't have anybody. Sure. Yeah, and I was I, I was kind of which way, which direction I want to go because I got a couple of questions, but um, I think you're right about. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I think you're right about um, you know you can't go to every location, and even if you do, because I think it's pretty it's pretty obvious that these beings, whatever they are, they they choose the terms. Right. Like we can't just go and and surprise them, and we can't uh, probably fool them even because I, I think they are pretty intelligent. But they choose the terms. So, like this, this weekly report, it's this is this whatever this thing's doing. It's doing it once a week when it decides to. So, go in there, you'd probably turn out much, not much of anything because you know it just wasn't the right time or didn't like the circumstances. It didn't like your smell. <laughs> yeah. oh, it smells too clean. <laughs> so. You might find the, the broken trees that she was talking about. Sure. Uh, you might find tracks, uh, but it would depend on. You know how hard a lot of the ground in Australia is is really rocky and, and hard. So unless it was right after rain and it, it stepped in mud, um, oh. where you get a good print. But uh, other than finding broken trees, um, where yeah, there, there's not much point sure. um, going to going to each place. We get a lot of people. We got a lot of people contacting us, going, "Oh man, you've got to come out to this area. I can definitely tell you they're out here." And <laughs> um, but we just, we, which could very well be true. Um, we just can't can't get to can't get to everybody. It's a big country. It's, yeah. it's similar to the states in size. So, yeah, right. um, yeah, I would be doing more field research with the boys, but they're they're so far away. That it's um, it'd take me. A week to drive there anyway <laughs> <laughs> well if you ever make it stateside you know we'll, we'll definitely show you around up here oh, because yeah, yeah we've there's that'd a, be awesome <laughs> there's a i mean i would love to we're in the north of idaho here and and of course this is a this is a pretty good area for it from here all the way well i don't know is it all the way over to the coast on oh yeah yeah there's yeah, reports yeah. and and we're bumping right into british columbia right on the north side so between us and washington huh. state i mean they're just they're they're then and actually we checked out a a, a a structure that uh don had come and come uh became aware of and it was pretty imp pretty impressive i'll send nice. you the pictures uh you can check it yeah, out that'd be good but yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, it is the needle in the haystack, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and the, and the, and the, you know, the, this incredible thermal camera footage that the boys managed to capture a few weeks ago was, that's that's months of planning, yeah. hard work, going back to the same place every weekend or, or regularly to you know, familiarise themselves with the area, but maybe also to, to familiar, familiarise the the local group of Yowies with them. Um, yeah, it's it's it, it, if you were to just happen to walk into a place that's supposed to have lots of Yowies and manage to see one, that would be a fluke and you've got more chance of being hit by lightning. Um, <laughs> yeah. True. Really, true. not that I'd wish that on you, but... Uh, <laughs> but so, so, so that's exactly right. You, 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 you choose a, a, a research area uh, and it's it's repetitive work and most of the time nothing happens right most of the time nothing happens mm -hmm. um, so you have to be very patient as well yeah I think it's I think it's that way for all of the paranormal and in fact I, I like to call researching any of this stuff like trying to catch catch lightning in a bottle I mean it's just right place yes. right time it's you know and you could be you could be just seconds away and and never have it or, or just boom all of a sudden it happens but um we're just yeah. about to go to our last break and Thank then we'll come gosh. back last <laughs> break i don't want any more breaks we just need to talk <laughs> i know it's, it's <laughs> it, it goes quick though doesn't it sarah 
It does. Yeah, it's going really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I can always come back and talk again, Don. Don't worry. All right. <laughs> yeah, and you definitely will. But we, we've got a lot more to discuss here in uh, just a couple minutes, ladies and gentlemen. But we're going to do our last break. And, and when the break comes in, it's anybody's guess. But I want to make sure to uh, let you guys know that following the Paranormal Portal on TFR, iHeart, Tune In and Talk Stream Live is Paisley Wild, the spaces Paisley between. Wild. So you're going to want to check that out as well. And if you're on YouTube and you want to check out her show, you can watch her stream her show. And that is on YouTube.com slash the spaces between. And sometimes you can catch the long beard on there. Sometimes, but not tonight. No? <laughs> not tonight. Don's done. Don's done. All right. But we're going to be... Um, <laughs> We're going to be back at it uh, in just a couple of minutes, and we're going to talk to Sarah about more of her uh, uh, interviews and more of the Yowie. And, and actually, I, you know, I got to tell you that we just had a Robin Moonshadow on the show, mm-hmm. Sarah, and she talked about some of the little uh, creatures around here uh, in, the, in the States. Ah. And uh, we, we seem to have a version of a little hairy thing, too, just like that. But anyway, we'll get to that on the other oh. side. Yeah, we'll talk about okay. it in a few minutes. Sounds great. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. We'll be right back. Or, I mean, right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. We are in our last stretch of the paranormal portal. It goes so quickly, but uh, that's what happens when you have epic conversation. That's all there is to it. The time just flies, and uh, it's been nothing short of amazing. I love I love tonight's guest. This is, of course, we are joined by Sarah Bignell of, of Yowie Central, as well as being involved with the AYR, the Australian Yaoi Research. And uh, you can uh, follow up with uh, more of the AYR if you go to yaoihunters.com. And they have an amazing website set up, up over there that uh, deals with a lot of the details and information regarding uh, the Yaoi presence in Australia. So very cool stuff. Um, how you doing, Sarah? Are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, I'm having a ball. This oh, is great. <laughs> I think I'll stay here, stay here all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can certainly uh, just keep roping you in as many times as you'll come back. That's a that's whenever a, you. Go ahead. I'd be delighted to come back whenever you want me to. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely take you up on that because I think that as I stated at the at the outset of the sh of the show, our our audience. I mean, they love all the paranormal. I think, but. But at least I, I force feed them everything, whether they like it or not. But but the one thing I can Open always your mouth. Yeah, it's time for the train to hit the tunnel. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they, they at least humor me. But I I don't have to worry when we do shows about the Yowie Bigfoots and and the cryptids because <laughs> these guys love it. It's like giving them candy after broccoli. You know, it's, <laughs> it's like how can you have any meat if you don't eat your pudding? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the easy sell, getting people to come over for the Bigfoot shows and and you're you've been an amazing guest and I appreciate you sharing all of this information but um how how has your opinion evolved uh regarding the Australian Yowie since you started that's a good question mm. I I think when I first started I actually had more I had I had looked into Bigfoot Sasquatch the American version more than I had really looked into the, the Australian version. Mm -hmm. uh, so my idea was kind of simplistic and, and from what I gathered, it, I, I thought that there was this giant, hairy, Chewbacca-like creature wandering around the countryside uh, in the bush. Mm -hmm. um, what I've come to understand, though, that, that it's way more complex and nuanced than that. Um, there's, there's, there's way stranger things going out there than just some hairy undiscovered ape-like creature walking around on two legs in in, in the bush um what i've also and i've mentioned i mentioned this before but what i've also discovered is that the people who the people who've had sightings are so genuinely traumatized um and so and so clearly affected you, you can hear the residual fear you can hear the the mm -hmm. shakes in their voice even if they're telling it to you years later. Um, so it, it, I guess what I've learned is that there's there's way more magic in it than I realised. I know that sounds a bit woo-woo, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot more to it. And I, I had always envisaged this creature that might dwell in deep in the forest somewhere, and that's not actually the case either. We get reports from... Um, areas around me, and I live in a I live in a country country area, but um, the, the, we don't have the the lush temperate rainforest that 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 Queensland does, for example, where Dean Harrison and the rest of the team live. Uh -huh. Very different landscape. Down here, it's pretty. It's old gold fields area. Um, not a lot of topsoil left. The whole place was dug up after the gold rush in the eighteen fifties, sixties. So, but we get reports still even around here in my local area. So they're not, they don't have to be in the deepest, darkest depths of the rainforest. Uh -huh. they're, they're actually in, even in areas where there's not a lot of forest, there's cleared farmland around. Um, that I found really, I found really fascinating. That is really fascinating. And, and that's the one of the things that I've taken away uh, in my journey learning about this is that, I'm pretty sure that they are by far the most adaptable being on the face of the earth. And, and some people say, well, human beings are too, but no, we just create our comfort everywhere. We create what's comfortable to us anywhere, but 
that doesn't make us adaptable. That just makes us able to, you know, uh, change the terms of the environment. But these these things are, are, are found in mountains. They're found in swamps. They're found in forests. They're found, you know, in just some of the strangest places. But they don't seem to be just surviving. They seem to be thriving. Mm-hmm. I think that's just and incredible. and and there seems to be more and more reports coming up. Um, that was my next question. And from <laughs> sorry, go on. <laughs> that was actually my it. next question. <laughs> um, I was curious. What do you account for uh, the fact that there is and, and seems to be more and more? Do you think that it's uh, a, a growth in population, or do you think that it's a matter of of our expansion that we're bumping into them more, or? Do you think that more, just more people are willing to talk about it? I think it's definitely more people are more willing to talk about it. Um, part of the reason why, wh- one of the things I realised why that was important about doing my show and about doing the research with Australian Yowie Research is destigmatizing the whole subject and getting people to mm-hmm. getting people to talk about it. Um, you don't have to be uh, you don't have to be a crazy person who's who's psychotic and having psychotic episodes to right. to see these creatures right. you know um and a lot of people they're so afraid of being ridiculed which is a a real genuine fear it's what it happens to the vast majority of people who who have these encounters they tell their friends and family and and you know they get laughed at and and sneered at and mocked and um sure. so i think that the, the more and more people are willing to talk about it because there's more and more people like you guys and like Dean and I and and the research team talking about the subject and making it a bit safer for yes. creating safer creating safer spaces for people to share their their experiences. Um, but it's also it's got to do there has to be that impact between human encroachment into into their territory. There has mm-hmm. to be. You know, because human beings do that. We, we we chop down forests and we rape and pillage the, the landscape and we do, we're do still doing that on a, on a massive scale all over the world. So mm-hmm. I would say also part of the reason why we're getting more reports is is we're encroaching into their territory now. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think and maybe as a result of the bushfires as well. We had massive oh, fires. Um, that's right. Last uh, a couple of two years ago on New Year's Eve um, over the summer, and uh, there was quite a lot of discussion in, in forums, Yowie forums, about what what what's happened because a lot of it was mountainous areas that were known habitats for for these creatures. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about where did they go, right? Like, where where are they now? How are those areas doing? I mean, are they, are they recovering? I mean, it's obviously it's still pretty new, after after the fact. But are you guys? Did you guys get in, uh, uh, us rain and, and enough uh, rain through the seasons to bring it back, or how's that looking? Yeah, it, yeah, it's 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 amazing how quickly things do recover. Uh-huh. Uh, how how quickly, how soon the green shoots, the epicormic shoots that 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 spring out from the trunks of what look like dead, burnt trees. How quickly that all comes back to life. Oh, uh, so yeah, we and we and we had a we had a three year drought, um, and that those fires came towards the end of that, or in fact, in the middle of that drought. Uh, that drought seems to have broken now. So we've oh. got yeah, it's it, the, the landscape's recovering, but it, it takes a while. Um, what 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 broke my heart though was all the the koalas mm-hmm. and that we like they were already. Uh, in danger of extinction, koalas, and those fires wiped out uh, so much habitat and billions of animals. It's, it's just, oh, yeah, pretty oh. tragic. Yeah, tragic. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. why I sent you a picture of a cute koala. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Did the... you draw fangs on it like I asked you to <laughs> so, you, so it could be a drop bear? <laughs> he, he was up on the wall behind me, but I see he's fallen down. But, yeah, I, li- I like that. I did not draw the he's fangs on him yet. Someone. <laughs> <laughs> he's dropped someone. Yeah, he's already – he's staying true to his name. He's, he must have saw something to drop on. <laughs> But no, I think I think that that's very interesting because I've often wondered that it's like I, I know that certainly the landscape has changed 
as far as discussing these things. And the, the common denominator that I hear oftentimes when I have spoken to, to witnesses, and, and I've talked to, uh, we had this one gentleman on, his, he went by the name of Bullbuck, which is a, it's a logging term, but that's the name he wanted to use, and that's fine. But he got through his story, and, and he said, you know, this is the first time I've talked about it, and, and I just feel so good. And, and it's just these cathartic moments that, that we get to be a part of, and, and I'm sure this is the case for you. Just like the, some people have carried these stories for you know, 20, 30 years mm -hmm. and never spoken to a soul just because of the ramifications of that, but the landscape is changing, and I think people are at least finally willing to uh, entertain the idea, if not outright believe it. Yeah. Although I think mainstream media still needs still needs a bit of help to, <laughs> and a bit of encouragement. To, yeah. well, because I, told, I mentioned to you that this incredible thermal uh, camera footage that the boys captured recently of two, yeah, it's unmistakable. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can you can see clearly. I don't know whether you've seen it, but uh, they've. They've been interviewed on all the national morning television shows and there's people from various different radio stations contacting them. But the television ones, though, are so snide and this is in my opinion, but I just they don't take it seriously. Right. They don't take your research seriously. They don't really understand that we take this very seriously. We take the research deadly seriously. Yeah. Um, it's not a joke uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and it's not something to mock people. This is part of the reason why people don't come forward and, sh and share their experiences is because you, you, the, the general mainstream belief is that this is all a myth and it's all, you know, bullshit. And it does, it's, it's not true and it's yeah. people who believe that stuff are delusional um, when we know that that's not the case. Right. We know oh. that's not the case. But, yeah, the media still aren't, aren't, treating, aren't treating the subject with the respect it deserves, I think. I agree, because even in the States here, you know, you get the, the anchor sitting at the desk. And next we're going to go over to Becky, who's going to talk to uh, Farmer <laughs> Phil about something he saw in the field. <laughs> you know, and see that, that same smirking <laughs> yeah. dismissal of, oh, how ridiculous is this, but prepare to be entertained. You know, it's just, it's, it's yeah, yeah. condescending it. as hell. Now I did watch that uh, interview clip that uh, I think Gary posted it and, and I saw it and I was like, and apparently, you know, they took things out of context, uh, context and it's just like, my God, you know, could, is it so hard to just say, Hey, this was what was seen and, and this is incredible. Um, but instead they, they just kind of, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible, but it, it certainly didn't give it, the gravity I think it deserves. I mean, that was an incredible series of, of, of photos and, and footage. And I, I can't wait to have Gary on to discuss it. So, Cause it, it's, it's. And it Gary's phenomenal. awesome. You'll love talking to him. He's, he's a, he's <laughs> a very knowledgeable, wise man. And he's a, he's a legend. Love him, love him, love him heaps. So yeah. you'll have to get Buck on there as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. They're a good, they're a good tag team. Actually, you should probably get them on at the same time. They, they, they work really. I, I, they came on my show together a few weeks ago and uh, it was a great, great chat. They're hilarious together. Oh, so awesome. yeah. maybe you could get them both on at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know Buck at all. I mean, Gary, has been uh, a friend and follower for a long time so uh that that was easy but I, I i'll have to get in touch with you about how to get in contact with buck because yeah i, I think i saw them on uh, uh bigfoot odyssey and they did a great job together talking about the footage and and all the nuances of it it was really an incredible interview they did a fantastic job yeah 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 it's it they they did do a fantastic job the amount of hours that i've put into not just preparing for that expedition and getting the footage but um uh, afterwards, because they knew that once they published that, they were going to be mm, hammered by the skeptics, <laughs> yeah. uh, and and they have been. I mean, the, the, sure. the mainstream media skeptics, and also what what is disappointing is that other other researchers who sure. who have just been really dis disparaging and and uh, um, you know, it's like where's the support team? Are we all? Aren't we all in it for the same reason, which is to research this incredible mystery, uh, find out more about it, you know? Um, yeah. But no, there's a, there's a lot of competition, exactly like I, I guess there is in the states. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I was I was actually, a lot of egos. Yes, it's like if you put out something, you've just chummed the waters, and you know, and then all the sharks show up, and it's like, my God, and and 
And it's unfortunate because there's been, there is and exists some incredible footage that I have seen personally, but that people will not release for that very reason. Mm -hmm. I've seen images. Uh, I was talking with another host just uh, uh, this last week, and she shared some stuff with me personally uh, off, <laughs> off the air of uh, images that were captured on trail cam. And they are phenomenal, but the person will Try. not will not let them out. Yeah, it was a daytime shot though. That's what's interesting. But when you when, when you see it and you see the scale uh, of this creature, it's just no way it was a person. They're, they're, it's just so broad and so big, and the stride length was so incredible uh, of this of this shot. It was just like I saw it. And I, I I tend to be skeptical of those kind of things because, of course, there's so many bad examples of that out there. Uh, of people trying to you know pull fast ones, but this one was clearly legitimate. But the person that took it will not release it, mm -hmm. and and I I, I can res respect that because once you do, you're you're inviting yourself into a gauntlet uh, and a feeding frenzy for people to attack you, and it's really unfortunate that there's so many egos involved in this because. If, if people work cooperatively, we could certainly leap much further ahead in, in research efforts and in, you know, comparing notes and, and figuring out what works and what doesn't. Exactly. And if we, you know, cooperate with each other and uh, have a, a, create, a, create a positive vibe rather than a competitive vibe, which is just not, that's the antithesis of whatever I want to be involved in. It's, it's not competition. It's, it's. Uh, it's teamwork, and yeah. and and it's 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 not about us. It's about this subject, um, and about these people who've experienced it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So that they, I mean, the, one of the morning TV shows, the host was like, "So there's this creature in the woods, and it's da -da -da -da, and like you know, dramatic music, and it's like, dude, there's no need for that. There's there's <laughs> It's 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 a it's a fascinating subject anyway. Without you making it sound like you're reading a, a book to kindergarten kids, <laughs> uh, you know. That's a, that's a great comparison. Yeah. I don't I don't watch those morning TV shows anyway. They're all a bit juvenile for me. But um, <laughs> yeah, I was disappointed by by most of the media portrayal of the boys of mm -hmm. the seriousness of their research as well. Um, yeah, but. Well, they've really thrown themselves yeah. into it, and they and they do uh, an amazing job. I mean, uh, I followed several of the videos that they've posted, just of them going out, and and the to see the effort that they go into when they do hit the bush, and and you know, I mean, it, it's you got to be part mountain goat to go to these places. These these guys are going. I, I mean, I'm really truly impressed. Absolutely. Um, I mean, what's one of Gary's nicknames is the mountain goat, but because uh, <laughs> he's yeah, he's so fit. But yeah. they they, I mean, I'm I'm pretty fit. I don't know if I'd be able to keep up with them uh, uh, because I don't live anywhere near them. I don't get to go out with them on expeditions. Um, but the 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 hiking, carrying heavy stuff mm -hmm. with snakes, with scorpions, with ticks with leeches with <laughs> just that just the leeches would or it's like okay i'll just stay here. i'll just stay here and interview people all right <laughs> yeah, exactly i mean i could go but gary the field research gary yeah. <laughs> gary'd have to pull me in a wagon <laughs> <laughs> yeah i joke with um one of my friends jasmine winter who's a, a psychic intuitive i've mentioned her to you a yes. while ago but yep. uh we joke because she's she said she senses them when they're around. She senses yowies, um, and I said, "Dude, we, we need to go on an expedition. But how about let's stay at the car? <laughs> we'll open a bottle of wine. <laughs> we'll send the boys out with the cameras, and we'll sit at the car. How's that? <laughs> Sounds like you're pretty hardcore, Sarah. <laughs> I'm super hardcore. Field researcher, super hardcore. <laughs> they call me Sarah Bear Grills." <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. I think that's a great idea. But you know what? I, th I think what is interesting, though, is that a lot of sightings seem to be coming uh, mostly from roads, like people mm -hmm. seeing them cross roads or, or standing next to a road or, or going after some roadkill or something. And I, I, I really firmly believe that probably the next Patterson-Gimlin film will come from somebody's dash cam. Like that's probably going to be... The, the next best piece of video evidence is probably going to be from somebody just having a dash cam and just happen to catch it. What yeah. do you think? What do you think? Yeah, totally agree with you. Uh, now that, and now that 
uh, there are, dash cams are affordable. Most people can afford one. Um, right. More and more people are getting them. Uh, I, I, I think that's, that's probably likely. Uh, the, the, the majority of the sightings reports that we get are roadside sightings. So mm -hmm. if, if just one of those people <laughs> in the future has a camera, <laughs> has yeah. a dash cam that's just running, um, yeah, we're bound to get something. Or, you know, what happens if all the... I had someone who got bought a dash cam to drive through the Pilliga, which is that area I told you, which is about 3,000 square kilometres of bushland. Right. It's really, really strange vibes, mm -hmm. uh, lots of yaoi reports, UFOs, ghosts. He bought a dash cam, starts driving through this... There's a main highway that goes through this... right through the middle of this national park, mm -hmm. and uh, all his... Your dash cam stopped working. Um, oh, all the electronic no. stuff. Oh, all the electronic oh. stuff in his car stops working. Oh, oh no! <laughs> and he's like, mm. and it's <laughs> raining, and he thinks, oh shit, what if I get bogged? Um, and and then the camera malfunctions, and he's like, right now, nah, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's too scary. <laughs> yeah, probably a good call on his part because that's when that, when all that stuff. And that's funny how much that comes up in uh, in reports, even from field researchers that are out there with their equipment. The cameras will quit working, and and then something amazing will happen. And and it kind of you know some people might dismiss it and go, oh well, yeah, that's kind of convenient, but. What if it's not? What if I mean? What if it's really something electromagnetic that's happening with their presence? I mean, it, it stands to reason. It comes up with uh, UFO reports all of the time, and even in even in uh, spirit uh, research for you know ghost hunting and such, they talk about you know EMF and and that being an indicator of their presence. So I don't know. I, I think there's something really profound to that. I think that it might be just another another facet of what what natural ability they have and how that works i don't know either but it's incredible how much that comes up yeah yeah i, I spoke to someone i just bumped into someone down at the radio studio the other day um who's who said oh you do that yaoi show oh <laughs> i love that show um i've got this this story we were driving across the desert in south australia and we saw orbs things that look like ufos but then all the the, the lights the cars electronics went haywire oh, um yeah. strangely for, for no reason never done it before never done it since um but what what that is right i don't know that's the hard part is what what is that is what is it um <laughs> what is that i don't know <laughs> yeah i don't know either i don't have the answers either sarah unfortunately but i wish i did but um <laughs> we're getting towards the end of it uh but i just wanted to say how much do you think that, or how much, not do you think, but how many more reports are you seeing in the last six months than the, you know, or the last year than the year before that? It's fairly, it's fairly consistent, to be honest. I've been doing the, I've been working with Dean and, and Australian Yowie Research for about two years and doing my show for about the same. Okay. Um, it, it comes in waves. Usually uh, when, when Dean puts out one of the witness audio reports that he's made into a YouTube video, we get an influx. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, we've had an influx since they put out the, the thermal camera yeah. um, in, footage. Um, we seem to, like it goes quiet over Christmas and then picks up in January. I, I got f just inundated in January with e report after report after report and actual sightings, people who need to be interviewed and so we can document what they've seen wow. so i i don't know i wouldn't say if i wouldn't just necessarily say that it's increased it's just constant but it's ebbs and flows throughout the year sure but lots lots, lots. Yeah. like truckloads truckloads well sarah we're about at the end of the show i just want you to have a couple minutes to tell everybody how to stay in touch with you and your show and uh, australian alley research uh so could you do that yeah, so my my show is Yowie Central, and it's you can stream it via my radio, my local radio station, which is mainfm.net, M-A-I-N-F-M.net. It's on every Wednesday Australian Eastern Standard Time, so that would be Tuesday night where you are. Uh -huh. um, it's Wednesday, 10 a.m. here, um, but you can find that if if you if you Google Main FM. Uh, you'll find the show, Yowie Central. Uh, and Australian Yowie Research, uh, we also have a, a fantastic website if you're interested in um, the over a 1,000 cases that we have documented, uh, historical 
going up to now historical newspaper uh, reports as well as current day modern reports, uh, audio reports of audio interviews of witnesses. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's easy enough to find online as well. Uh, and you can join the Yowie Central Facebook group. Uh, just request to join and, and I'll approve. And I post links to uh, every, every week's show on the on the Facebook group, uh, but I also do post the shows to um, Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, iTunes, uh, and Mixcloud. I think a few of those a few of those platforms. So you can find it you can find it on your favorite platform as well. Excellent. There you go, folks. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Sarah. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I'm just had a ball. Uh, right back at you. It's been fantastic. I'd love to come back. And uh, really, really love chatting to both of you. Awesome. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Don, anything in closing? Uh, no. Thank you, Sarah. It's nice to get to speak with you. And there we go. Have a great day. All right. We love you all. Be yeah. good. Be kind. Be nice. Take care of each other. Help each other out. Find the magic in every day. And remember to laugh as much as you can. Sarah, hold, or Sarah, hold on Skype. I'm going to talk to you after I close the show, okay? Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.